listening to A to the K. 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 Wrestle Talk Podcast. Check it out. Change your life. You'll be thanking me later. Now it's time for this week in wrestling. Carl, would you like to kick us off with the raw results? Uh, what a rush. <laughs> nice. It was not a good one, Anthony. It was not a good one. I'll preface this now by saying, if I was to list out the highlights, you'd be done now, because there fucking wasn't any. But, ahead of that, we'll go through the match card, because I'm sure, I'm sure you can't wait to hear what I had to sit through for three hours. So, I can't wait, I'm off. actually on, literally on the edge of my seat. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I need to be on the edge of a rooftop. <laughs> um, Damn. <laughs> kids, don't. Um, okay, so kicking off Raw this week, we had the tag team triple threat match. The winners would take on the champions at Clash of Champions. We had the super team of Gaza and Andrade taking on Rollins and Murphy, taking on Umberto and Dominic. Because they're Mexican, right? So let's make them a team. I mean, yeah, because that was a thing. Like, yeah. they were clearly friends with Humberto. They, they clearly were, you know, they established that friendship and that that yeah. that whole thing. Like, I didn't even yeah. fucking know they knew each other, but hey-ho. <laughs> like I mean, similar, similar to Garza and Andrade, they're Mexican, so they're a team, <laughs> so, right? Okay, That's yeah. how it works. Why not? <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> WWE. Do you know who won after all this? It was Gaza and Andrade. So it turns out Delina Vega oh, was fucking shit, apparently. Because she <laughs> yeah, didn't fuck all she had them, literally she zero impact off. on their lives. Exactly. Just negatives through and throughout. But we um, like Delina. Don't worry. Yeah, we do. Um, then we got um, the Kevin Owens show. And we got to see Shane McMahon take... Oh, no, we didn't... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we did not get to see Shane McMahon take on Dabakito because that would be uh, that would be a whole different uh, segment. But we got to see Shane McMahon and Dabakito um, on the Kevin Owens show because that's what we want to see. Um, oh yeah, we also got to yeah. See exciting stuff. <laughs> Drew McIntyre, <laughs> Drew McIntyre versus Keith Lee. Seven this time. It's super, super, Seven. super personal, <laughs> probably. Um, so then we got to see that. Um, and that ended in disqualification. Of course it did. Because they can't have anyone ever win anything ever. So that was good. How many matches are they going to um, have? We don't know. It's limitless. Exactly. Um, then, fresh off her you know, stellar performance the previous week with the terrible ending, Mickey James took on Selena Vega. And uh, the winner was going to take on Asuka, our class of champions. And Asuka, who won? It was Selena Vega. Yeah. Yeah, because naturally, because that was built up over a couple of weeks, so weeks, that like makes long. sense. Like, not as logical as as Mickey James, who even had the squash there as part of the story. No, no, you know, no, 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 no. fuck that. Let's let's just randomly put this together, ready for Clash of Champions, yeah. shall we? Yeah. Yes, Anthony. I mean, it's hard for some people to understand that this is what we call long term booking. You know what I mean? Exactly. This is just. You know what? I mean, credit to Bruce Pritchard. This is some just, you know, it's fantastic. It's Sutton. It's Sutton. Um, we also got to see Cedric Alexander take on Apollo Crews. And Apollo Crews won this time, which makes oh, okay. no sense. But okay. So Cedric Alexander is just as successful as he was with those two. Well, in MVP, you changed the guy. You made him. You made him. Um, Seth Rollins drops a bombshell about the Mysterio family. It's a fucking... It's Sutton. He drops... <laughs> oh, fuck's he dro- sake. He drops Sutton. It's more like a fucking deuce, but he drops Sutton. We'll come on to that. Um, then we have a women's tag match. We have Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler taking on Lana and Natty because we want to see that. With no shocks, Nia and Shayna picking up the win. Okay, why was this even here? Oh yeah, because we've oh. got three hours. Yeah, pretty uh. much the rationale behind most of the card. Um, we had Asuka taking on Peyton Royce, who's still sort of friends with Billy Kay, somehow. Kind so of. Well, but they keep hinting that they don't like each other. Yeah, yeah. But um, What is this? You know, you know, obviously Asuka won, though. 
Except, oh wait, no, no, even that was a DQ because <laughs> no one can win anything ever. When anyone is like partially liked by uh, Vince, like together, then no one can win. It, 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 it's like an interesting thing. We have Raw Underground. We had Braun Strowman making his appearance from SmackDown for some reason, taking on Dabakato for some reason. And uh, I mean, obviously, weeks. logically, they're gonna they're gonna build up the younger talent, aren't they? And, like he's a monster That's of a it. man. He's going to the be a match point. for Braun, which you've never seen before. It's going to be amazing, right? We're going to see like Dabakato have a really good show and show some of his, you know, his in-ring prowess and and just take the victory and then just be propelled into the main event picture. That's what's going to happen, right, Carl? Exactly. It makes so much sense. All these weeks, I've been wondering why does Raw Underground exist, and now we know. Building up new talent? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, obviously <laughs> no. not. No, it's for. <laughs> It's a Braun Strowman to kick Davicato's ass. So of course now we know. Now because we know. you know who really needs to look strong right now is Braun Strowman. Like yeah. I've even you know what, we'll talk about this on the Oshites, which I'm sure it's there. Yeah. <laughs> um then we have a six man tag, Anthony. Retribution are now signed. To contracts. They've okay. got new masks. They've got new names. <laughs> fucking They're new come out people. with stupid fucking <laughs> Halloween store fucking masks and go on about how you're going to ruin the system from the inside. You fucking sellouts. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, um, okay, I'm buying into the story so it kind of works because I'm moaning at them for being sellouts. But yeah, fucking stupid. Yeah. And we have so basically their match is the hair business. They're going to take them on in their debut, and then they find out they've got names now, guys. Um, So we've got what we've got slapstick, um, tea bag, and what was the last guy? Um, I don't really know the last guy. Face. Hang on, got to hear, got to hear in my notes. So we've got slapjack. That's him. Yeah. Titty bar, and. (laughs) Meh. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. And uh, in typical WWE, fa- right? And I know we're going to cover this as a topic, right? And and hopefully, not to drop any hints, but hopefully we've got like a really good good thing coming up with 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 the whole women's division thing, right? And we're going to talk about women's evolution and, and women in wrestling, right? But here's WWE, right? And this is just a minor petty thing, but they didn't even bother naming the women. No, no. I want to. I want to point that out right now. They were retribution. Well, we need to name the guys because they're the important ones, right? They didn't fucking bother name it. We don't know what the two women in retribution are actually called yet. No, are they even still there? Who knows? Who knows? Well, they let me. We have to call her Mia Yim because they haven't given a fucking retribution name. But they let her talk. So, did you just assume she was Mia Yim? You assume, like, here's mm-hmm. was the most revealing mask. Like, <laughs> here's the one that solidifies that you were NXT talent. I've still got major issues with the fact that Mia Yim is part of a faction who just fucking kicked the shit out of a boyfriend like a week or two ago. I don't know, right? Still, still got a minor, minor thing about that. But anyway, um, and then, uh, oh no, that was it. That was the main event. I'm thinking, what was next? <laughs> that was it. That's how so, much of a main event it did not feel. Like, that was it. You may have noticed, Anthony, in between, I topped up my glass in preparation for the shit show that was about to go down. So Okay, well, hang on, because I'm a little bit behind you, so I'll do this on screen so you know what I need, guys, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, I'm ready. That's, that's, that's yeah, that's a good <laughs> amount for this role. We do not condone drinking. I mean, you have to drink to live, Anthony. Come on, we're not savages. Remember, though, think 21 or whatever. (laughs) Something like that. Something like that. So, Anthony, so, Anthony, I mentioned ahead of the show, I've not got a single fucking highlight. So, (laughs) predictions now, guys. What am I going to rate this fucking show, if you can call it that? But we'll start off with our first O'Shite of the evening. Do it. Retribution have officially signed contracts with WWE. Really? I know we've spoken week on week. Who the fuck is the authority? Who the fuck signed them contracts? Who the fuck is going, oh, these bastards, you know, breaking in here every week, fucking up our productions, smashing windows, 
you know, probably like cutting themselves or whatever the fuck they do in the spare time. They're signed to contracts. Okay. This, right? this whole thing, right, has been so fucking lazily put together. I want to point out, right, that they were more concerned with keeping Drew out of the building before they were concerned with keeping Retribution out of the fucking building. Right? Oh, yeah. I want to point that out because we had a whole week where that uh, what's his face who was still named still escapes me was just chasing Drew around like go we'll keep telling you to leave go and he's the fucking t- the main fucking title holder on your <laughs> show and you're asking him to not be around but no yeah retribution to do what the fuck they want right well that's it but like, Anthony hang on a minute the announced team are fucking terrified of them as soon as, he, as soon as like how many times each week to be here it's retribution <laughs> And they all run away because okay. <laughs> so for me you know, though, like, and again, I know, I know, I know it's a show, I know it's scripted, right? <laughs> but at the end of the day, the suggestion is like they're coming in unannounced or menacing and doing what they want. Like, someone sat down and made them graphics. You know, <laughs> they've made them an entrance. You know, they, they, they like. So uh, not only have they signed a contract, they've, they've sat with someone and gone, right, so this is what we're going for. You know, we want this whole rebellious thing. So we don't really want any music, but we kind of still want an entrance. So we want this graphic. To come up. Not Holy like your shit. standard raw <laughs> graphic. We want like a, a, our own retribution one that looks like spray paint because that's what we do. Like they've sat with someone and done all that, right? And that's the bit that kind of takes me out of the story. It's like, like if you were just showing up and you didn't have any of these niceties that actual superstars have, I would be a bit like, okay, so you're trying to make out like yous aren't meant to be there and you're rebels and it just doesn't fucking work because they won't fucking work it properly. Anthony? Yeah? You've just solved it. The leader of Retribution is either Orton or Drew McIntyre because obviously they've got mad Photoshop <gasps> skills. Shit, you're right. That's it. <laughs> oh, it is long-term booking after all, right? Wow, that is impressive. Right? Nice one, WWE. Yeah. No? Hat no? off it. Okay. No? Oh. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. But, like, the thing that baffles me about this is, like, they finally signed to contracts. Like, we don't know who the fuck they are. Like, they haven't had an NXT contract for years. Like, are you fucking, like, are you f- do you think we're fucking thick, Anthony? Do you really do? It, is, it pisses me off so much. They constantly insult our intelligence. And that, at the minute, is what pisses me off so much about WWE. Now- you don't think we've got a fucking brain. Maybe they're onto something, Carl. Maybe they're trying to teach us a moral here. So, now, I, I quite enjoy playing video games, right? So, for me, like, a real good job would be working for, like, PlayStation or someone, right? So, that's the job I want, right? So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start turning up to their head office, and I'm just going to smash some windows, push the coffee machine over. I'm just going to keep messing with shit, right? And then, eventually, they're going to give me a contract, because that's how it works, right? I mean... That's the model of the story here. If you if you go in and, and hassle them enough and and be enough of a problem, they will go, fuck it, we'll pay you. Just stop. That that's that, that's how it works, right? That's the model of the story. Maybe. There's no consequences to your actions, you just get money. Well, exactly. You get a main event uh, match on, on, on yeah, your, your first main, show, your main so. event raw. That's that's the result. Yeah. yeah, makes perfect so, sense. Um, so there you go. Um, <laughs> That's who you want to be, guys. <clears throat> like, I don't know. Like, I know that we sound proper fucking petty and cynical and stuff. And I know I've been, you know, comparing these guys a lot to Nexus and stuff when they debuted. And you might draw the parallel that, like, oh, well, you know, Nexus were main events and stuff. But it wasn't rammed down our throats to the point of, like, oh, these guys, oh, for weeks and weeks and weeks, who are they? Blah, blah, blah. And then, oh, now we've been, we've given them contract. It was just. Okay, NXT showed up. They were already signed. They smashed shit up. They fucked shit up. And then they earned themselves an opportunity. But you see, this is the that's thing. The I think difference. that's the major difference that Nexus have gone. We are NXT talent and we are looked down upon by you guys. And we're making a point. Whereas Retribution, like, we hate WWE, but we're going to be here every week. Yeah. yeah. And it's just not exactly. the same. It's not the same vibe at all. Yeah. And like you say, it's, it's an insult to our intelligence. We're willing to suspend disbelief. Fucking hell, we've been watching a like a zombie on TV for fucking years, right? We're willing to suspend disbelief, but this is just, it, it's just so fucking lazy, to be honest. Yeah. So lazy. No, it was awful. It was awful. It was awful. And we mentioned before, I think I think you did, you summed it up best, the fucking ridiculous masks and stuff that they've got, fucking 
fucking Jason Voorhees. No, well, not really bugs me. Right? This is a stupid <laughs> thing to bug me, right? But the Jason Voorhees one, you can see his nose. <laughs> Who makes a mask and then cuts out the nose bit? Like that not, seems, um, it looks really kind of odd. I'm not sure who it was, but somebody, and it, it was a wrestler, so yeah, please tell me if you know, somebody made a fantastic fucking joke at their expense saying, wow, it gets really boring at catering um, to cut up a paper plate like that and use it as your mask. <laughs> That's <laughs> ace. And it was just like, like, wow, that is fantastic. But it, it looked just like that. Like, they've got shitty masks, they've got shitty fucking names. Now they're our main event of the fucking show. It's awful, right? And the main event itself was terrible. It was like, this is the in-ring debut. They look shit. <laughs> yeah. Like they were, they they, were that's awful. when they should look dominant. Yeah, you know. it was so bad. They were fucking underwhelming. They got battered all the way through. It was a weird fucking disqualification slash like weird submission finish. All of a sudden, the whole locker room come out and they're all fighting again. Then all of a sudden, fucking Randy Orton comes out out of nowhere and batters Drew. And it's just like, oh fuck this shit. It was it was so yeah. bad. So it was bad. awful. Ridiculous. It was awful. Stupidly, lazily put together, and let's to top it off. We have this massive thing happen on Raw, and then they're, they're not going to be around for Clash Champions at all because <laughs> oh, yeah, they're not involved not. in that because they don't hold any belts, so they're, they're going to stay away from that. They're not going to wreak any havoc. Don't worry, guys. You know, it's going to be totally yeah. fine because they've signed contracts now, so you know, yeah, you know, these like fucking crazy rebels who are out for blood and to destroy the company don't think to challenge the pay per view, of course. No, no, because um, that's yeah. when WWE make real money, yeah, exactly. Um, so that was our main event which was fucking dog shit um, the tag match I mentioned before um, so Dominic I've been quite I've praised him quite a lot I've been quite impressed with him yeah his in-ring he looked really off been surprising in this now. match he was really off um, I don't know what it was it just whether it was chemistry <laughs> thing or what I'm better but... making him uncomfortable <laughs> maybe he's like oh, <laughs> why, why am I tagging with you just because you're Mexican Um <laughs> But yeah, so it, it wasn't good. It was good. Um, we then got fucking Seth Rollins walking out on Murphy, um, which would be okay if we hadn't seen it like several times with fucking Gaza and Andrade. So why would we care at this point? It wasn't I don't like, know it why. It, it, it seems to be the new thing that WWE like to do where one partner walks out on the other. other like, yeah. Okay. Less yeah, and less definitely. impactful the more you do it. And like I mentioned loosely before as well, but it seems like Gaza and Andrade have like fared better off without Zelina. And like, well, since you're like pushing <laughs> Zelina one. at the minute, like really, like <laughs> so, yeah, it didn't make yeah. sense. Like for me, it just it, it screamed to the riot squad these two. They were going to break them up and have a few together, and they were like, oh well, we're not going to break them up now, so let's have them as a tag team again, and let's just get rid of Zelina and make her into the women's. Yeah, so yeah, awful. Right, I just want to. For a second, right? We've got Andrade and Gaza who aren't getting along very well. Mm-hmm. The Riot Squad who split up and reformed. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler who don't really want to be a tag team together. The Iconics who are split up but still kind of are friends. Bailey and Sasha who are no longer friends and have fallen out massively. And uh, they say WWE are good with tag teams. Oh, they fucking don't yeah. actually. They never say that yeah. because this is the. What, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you ruining like, it? Even they don't know, Anthony. Even they don't know. Um, speaking it's of like... five tag teams in, in the last few weeks that you just fucked. <laughs> speaking of WWE not knowing what to do, we have the Kevin Owens show, Anthony. And boy, did this suck. So we had um, fucking Dabber, fucking Dabin, Dabin Kato, whatever the fuck he is. Dabin Kano from Mortal Kombat. Um, comes out. Who cares? There he is. Can't talk or anything anyway, so why have him on a fucking talk show? Um, Braun's there and you know because yeah. Braun's such a good talker and he came out and he went I love how they've gone so what, what's your what's your, um, what's your weakest thing Dabba uh, your mic skills okay uh, you Braun what's your weakest thing mic skills okay so what we'll do we'll do the KO <laughs> show how about that talk show everyone cool yeah. with that yeah bit of talking well, it's okay it's okay though because not much talking happened Anthony because you know what Alistair Black emo king himself turned up and he started battering Kevin Owens. But you know what was really funny? You know that um, that weird little ice scarf he hasn't needed for the past few yeah, years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, still got it on, hasn't he? Cause... Yeah. I, I love how... Um, sorry for the... Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop a, a, a rather aggressive um, swear word. But uh, I love how they were like, oh, he's going to have a gimmick change when he comes back. And yeah, you're right. Yeah, you've turned him into a cunt. Mm-hmm. Like, what? what is this? Why is he even going after Kevin Owens? Did he even dislike Kevin Owens? Like, 
when did that happen? Like it purely because he was like, I want you to be on the KO show, and he's gone. No one asked me to be on stuff. Like, what what is this feud based on? I mean, equally as as tasteless and pro- maybe as, as offensive. I'm not sure, but I feel like the wrestling version of a cunt should be a cum because we'll see you Monday. <laughs> yeah. That's what this show has been. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um. yeah, that was bullshit. Um, then. We got Drew McIntyre versus Keith Lee. Finally, we wanted to see this. You know, yeah, it's been get a, it's weeks get a match in the making. The results for once. Finally, yeah. yeah. Oh wait, what? Okay, oh. okay. Of course, of course, they don't get a finish no. because yeah, because people can't actually finish matches in no. WWE anymore. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually. I think at some point we need to do a tally of the amount of fucking DQ finishes they've had in in a single year. Because this is getting ridiculous now. Yeah. No, it's, 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 yeah, it's awful. Awful. Um, we then got Zelina Vega taking on Mickey James. And unfortunately, again, this match was actually quite bad. And it's such a shame because I am a massive fan of Zelina. I think she's fantastic. She's been a bright spot in a very dark raw over the past few months. Correct. Excellent on the mic. She's mm-hmm. been like she's really overachieved. She's been but what she's just... got the Mexicals over really in a lot of senses. Yeah. Like when they were a trio with Austin Theory, who you know he he's, he got beat so <laughs> hard like back on NXT. <laughs> but um, yeah. You know, when that was a thing, she was the main thing selling that little trio. And um, yeah, yeah, her mic skills are unparalleled in that sense. Yeah, it's just a shame that her ring ring work isn't quite ready. Um, And they've kind of forced her into the main event scene with Asuka and Mickey James and stuff. And it's just a bit like, well, I don't know, because I feel like this match was just, it felt, it screamed. And I don't want to take anything away from like, you know, the Trish and Lita and like that kind of era, but it felt a bit. I don't know, it felt a bit of a generation behind a little bit from Zelina. Like she was waiting for like stuff to happen and the time was off and stuff like that. And yeah, I don't know. I just, it's such a shame really because I, I wanted to do really well. Um, and we will come on to this because obviously the pay per view has happened since. And I feel like she put in a significantly better performance in the pay per view. Um, I think this, she just needs match, to, Yeah, there's a lot of, there's work to be done, isn't there? But yeah, mm. I'll take your point. Yeah, just a shame. And I feel bad for Mickey as well, because obviously she had the fuck up last week with the um, weird finish, and then obviously she's had to follow that up with a match, which was it felt a bit cumbersome. So, you know, kind mm. of over for 2 for, for Mickey now for a couple of weeks. So, yeah, a bit of shame yeah. there. Anthony, my fucking God. My God, Anthony, save me. Please save me from this next no. one. Jesus. No. no, not fucking saving you. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, no. No, no, Anthony. Look what I've just done. Can oh, no. Can you see? Why, Carl? <laughs> blood, blood everywhere. Uh, yeah, to be fair, it still what, looks mad on your face. Like still, that's what Tazawa yeah. felt <laughs> in the, se- in the <laughs> segment. Blood everywhere. Because guess what? In WWE, it's fine for Tazawa to get eaten by a shark. Because that's what happened. So our truth is on the beach for some reason, and um, yeah, um, there's a big like you know Tazawa comes out to see. There's a big wave and. Our truth actually is titled, just like gets swept away. And part of me was thinking, okay, this is how they're going to write off the 24 7 title. It's going to get washed ashore. Like, I like go, go off into sea. Amazing. Like, that would make sense. And finally, it's done with. It's a great way to, to end it. But no, instead, a shark kills Tozawa. And um, the title comes back to our truth uh, thanks to little Jimmy, who's back as well. So that's good because I thought it was going to be awful. And it turns out. Yeah, it was. It was even worse. It was even worse yeah. than I thought it was going to be. So. And not only that, Carl, our truth is now a record holder. Did you know that? Go on. Lighten. He just held, you know, he's had 45 title reigns. I just, want, I just want us to, to marinate on that for a second. Our truth yeah. is a, a record holder for the highest amount of title reigns that no one's ever going to reach because that title change hands every fucking week, like some sort of stupid fucking gimmick, which it is. Well, Anthony, well, Anthony, we're going to come on to this when we talk Clash of Champions, but I've got some very harsh words to say about the twenty four seven title. So, yeah, to be honest, well, I will clarify the forty five title reigns comes from the results of Clash of Champions, <laughs> but we will talk about that further. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, so what a fucking piece of shit segment that was. Like, holy shit. 
I don't know why they do it. Why did they do it, Anthony? It's awful, right? But anyway, do you know what else is bad? So we have the hair, biz- the hair business. They've revived the careers of Bobby Lashley. They've revived yeah. the career of Shelton Benjamin. Now they brought Cedric under their wings. Last yeah. week, he beat and, Ricochet. And they look Vincent. badass. You know, they come out to deal with retro. Dominant. Fantastic. Exactly. Yeah. Come out. Yeah. yeah. No, this week, Cedric gets beat by Apollo Crews. So, okay. Okay. That was good. 50 50 booking. That's fine. Yeah. You know, because mm. nothing says this guy's going to do well in uh, the hair business like Apollo Crews beating him clean. Well, yeah. Of course. Like that, that, that is the status quo of, yeah. of you know, yeah. I can't even talk about this next one, Anthony. I'm really like, I'm really <laughs> this was Did you remember? Fucking worst thing on the show. This was ridiculous. Why? Why are we doing Do this remember, Jerry Springer Anthony, bullshit? Not too long ago, we spoke about the worst gimmick Look, matches. I can see your fucking note here, Carl, right? <laughs> Right, and I wasn't wrong. Well, I was wrong. I was clearly wrong. But like, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> go on. Well, I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna shame you, but I'm... still, right, right. So a week or so ago, we spoke about the worst gimmick matches in all of wrestling, and on that list was that one time old WWE where they were crazy and decided to go, let's do a custody storyline where Dominic isn't really Ray's kid. And it was like, ooh, that was in poor taste. Yeah, that would never fly today. <laughs> well, fucking hell, he tried, don't he? So, this week on Raw, Anthony, Seth Rollins comes out and he's, uh, he's had a, a paternity test done. And he tries to say that Dominic still isn't Ray's kid. Again. 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 Right? But hang on. Wait a minute. Actually, it might not just be Dominic. Maybe it's Ray's daughter as well. Okay, so just when you thought it couldn't get worse, not only the rehashing the storyline from fucking 10, 20, however long ago, years ago, now he's bringing his daughter into it as well. Oh, it's it's, it's it, totally different, though. It's totally different because this time it's his daughter. So, you know. Well, yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, but it's okay because now that it's his daughter, she can play the, oh, my God, Dad, you don't, you don't respect me, Dad. You think I'm just a dumb kid, Dad. You don't get me she, at all. <laughs> and so she walks off halfway through Rey Mysterio I fucking hate Rey Mysterio's fucking promo I hate it right what like how does it make sense to go yeah so I'm talking to you I'm going to do a little Mexican 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 and now I'm talking to you in English again Mexican 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 now, what are you doing you can speak English he's doing a slightly more extreme version of Eddie Guerrero like you never really noticed it with Eddie if you know what I mean like it was never a problem like Eddie would throw in a few words here and there that we would know. So we'd be like, you would be like, oh, I'll leave though, and stuff like that. And you'd be like, okay, so we can, we can work with that because mm-hmm. we're not losing what's being said. Whereas like Ray well, seems that... to do like a full fucking paragraph. I'm like, but what did you say, Ray? We don't all speak Spanish. Exactly. Like, that was fine. Like, Eddie would start, like, a, a promo with Orele Vato or, like, Viva la Raza or whatever. Yeah. Cool, right? Because we kind of got what that meant. Ray speaks a fucking sentence, then goes, okay, now I'm going to throw in a bit of Mexican, and goes, I don't know, 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 I It's a bit more fucking Italian than anything, I think, but regardless, um, I hate it, I hate it so much, it's fucking stupid, right? Do you know what's even more stupid, Anthony, right? Oh. Now, his fucking daughter is doing the same. <laughs> so we have a promo in the back and she does exactly the same. Goes, Dad, you don't, you know, you still think of me as a little girl. And it's like, oh my God, how can this get any worse? It's fucking <laughs> stupid. I hate it. So I hate it. I can't I know you hate it, it, Carl. Right. And I'm going to play devil's advocate <laughs> right. a little bit here. Go on. And Spanish is much more significant. Uh, all due respect to any Spanish listeners. In the states, like they have a lot more Spanish-speaking. Um, That's fine. People, it, it's it's taught a lot more in schools. Like, we always got French. Like you do, you go to school, yeah. they go, let's learn some French for some reason, right? Yeah. Uh, I can't speak French, by the way, guys. Um, but I kind of get why they're like throwing bits of Spanish, Latino speak out there because you know even a lot of the um, the American-speaking audience would probably pick up on a few you know, words here and there. But um, 
yeah, I do agree with you. It's frustrating because like it's See, it's a little bit like too much. Like I have no idea what's being said right now. <laughs> I disagree. So we are an English podcast and okay, we talk French. Okay, okay. And most of our <laughs> most of our listeners talk French as well, right? At GCSE level, probably, right? But we're not here like going, ah, oh, Ray Mysterio is a fucking dick. Oh, we're in the biblioteca, come and survive. Like, we just don't do it because why would we? Why the fuck would no, we? So well, I think that I think there's a there's almost like a threshold to this, I think, because like, you know, Ray's first language isn't English and his family's first language isn't English. So they're doing their best to speak English for our <laughs> sake and then slip back into a bit of, again, I want to say Spanish, you know, Latino. Um, and again, I think it's that, that balance of going, well, you're, you're on TV and we need to understand what's moving the plot forward and what's being said. So the longer you do that, the more we're a bit lost. I kind of get why it's part of it because it's like, well, you're going to go to your more natural tongue, you know? Natural tongue. I like it. But, um, but I take your point. Like, it's like, it, it's just the name it, of our rock band. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, natural tongue. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I take your point. Like it's, it like it, I think the balance was always quite perfect with the likes of um, Eddie and Charbo. Whereas with Ray, it's like, what? What did he say? I'm, Are you I'm just angry, Anthony? Anxious. Because the last point on my notes, which you've already alluded yeah, to, I'm, I'm is <laughs> <laughs> somebody. Somebody said, "I think I called." Well, you know, isn't she only nineteen? And Buddy is like nearly forty. You're like, well, well, she's twenty-one. Look, I think she's nineteen, clear, Anthony. In storyline, she is nineteen, Anthony, and it's creepy. And need, Buddy's a creep. I think we need to be clear here that all this says is I'm not good at guessing people's age, right? <laughs> So it's a good job I don't work in a bar. Well, but, all I'm going to say, Anthony, is whenever we get our first interview on, who will remain nameless until we fully signed and secured her, don't guess her age, because otherwise she won't be back. You've no worries there. I already know she's my generation. Mm. So we're good. But um, no, you, I'm, not, I'm not good at that. <laughs> but, but yeah, um, I don't yeah, know. I, I'm, to be honest, I'm like, I just, why are there so many, like, like retribution are kind of like rebelling against their father figure in Vince, and now we've got <laughs> whatever her name is. Imagine they were just all, Ray. All, Vince, all Vince's bastard kids. I would love that. We That'd could be so make much a whole funny. plot over Vince, Vince's bastard yeah. kids. But, but it's, um, really small one is just Hornswoggle back again. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, and yeah, now we've got Ray's daughter, Rebellion, whose name escapes me. Apologies, Ray's daughter. I feel like, um, Anthony, this is building towards almost like a WrestleMania 2000 moment where instead of a McMahon in every corner, it's a fucking Mysterio in every corner. And I don't know what's on a pole, but something's on a fucking pole. It's probably a Murphy <laughs> on a pole match. I'm telling you, it's not good. It's not good. We're not Mysterio. We're Mysterious. <laughs> and Peter Andre comes out and he's just like, oh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. No, it's just yeah. I mean, clearly what they're going for with Ellis, and I'm sure you're going to cover it. But like, what the fuck are they doing with? Um, it's Aaliyah, isn't it? A name. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck are they doing with Aaliyah? Like, is she going to be no. an in-ring competitor? Is she just going to be involved in this Jerry Springer bullshit? Is she going to have some sort of love interest with Murphy, who's clearly well too old for her? And let's be honest, we know exactly what's going to happen, Carl. I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen. Murphy's going to be like, oh, yeah, I dig you too because I'm down with the kids and I'm young and all that. And he's going to lure her in and then he's going to betray her because he secretly still wants to win mm-hmm. Seth over. So Seth's manipulated Murphy, who in turn manipulated Leah. That's the storyline, guys. That's exactly what's going to happen. I will go down quoting this now that he is going to lure the girl in and then betray her for Seth, right? And if I am wrong, I will eat my hat. So, guys, as a side note, we'd like to support charity here. If you can buy Anthony a hat for just nine ninety nine to feed his hat eating habit. <laughs> it happens more than I care send to. It, admit. Send it to P.O. Box, <laughs> A to the K. Um, oh, we should okay. get a P.O. Box. That'd be fun. We should. That'd be cool to have. You get no mail, but it'd be nice to have one, right? <laughs> um, so then the other match that I want to talk about, Anthony, is the women's tag match. And what a snooze fest that was. So, um, basically, the Riot Squad were on commentary. 
Um, after the match, uh, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler go after them. They manage to get away. And guess who goes through a table again? Lana. You know, I'm pretty sure there's no hard feelings with Miro. Honestly, WWE. But, <laughs> you know, you're, you're twatting his wife on a weekly basis. So just saying. Just saying. Um, it's, I want to mention this at this point, right? I was reading the thing about Retribution taking a shot at uh, WWE. No, not WWE. The other one. AEW, right? And mm-hmm. during that article, they mentioned that, like, oh, WWE have not really took any shots at AEW, despite all the shots AEW have taken at them, with the, the likes of Kip Sabian making the points and the likes of um, Jericho calling himself the Demogod and so on and so on. Like, AEW are more overt with their shots at, at, um, at WWE. And I'm like, am I ro- watching the wrong product? Because I think WWE have been relatively overt, like, when they had... Jeff Hardy faint because he didn't have enough water, <laughs> or when they deliberately used bash at the but beach. But he didn't get a concussion, Anthony, because he's this superior fucking Hardy. Of course, yeah. And then when they used um, not bash at the beach, what was it? Great American bash. Um, after Cody wanted to to win that copyright, and various other little bits that were, albeit more subtle, but definitely a jab. Like, am I watching the wrong product or am I seeing something that's not there? Because people seem to think that WWE haven't been um, being petty, even though they fucking have. Mm. Is that about? Yeah. And like you say, this is another clear one. Like, yeah, yeah, Lana's getting punished. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like um, you've obviously got fanboys in both brands and both products, but at the same time, like the the WWE ones just seem to just feel like they can do no wrong, which is, uh, yeah, strange, Mm. shall we say. Um, but Anthony, it's okay because guess what? Go on. We had Asuka taking on Peyton Royce. This is Vince McMahon's wet dream because Peyton Royce <laughs> is now taking on the women's champion. And you know, he's got a proper hard on for Peyton Royce. So you know the match is going to be really good and it's going to be, oh, yeah, no, nope, yeah, another DQ. Of course it is because it Vince is. McMahon's got a hard on for Peyton Royce and he doesn't want Asuka to lose. He doesn't want Peyton to lose. <laughs> So how do, you, how do you settle these kind of uh, Wait, things? so you're telling me, right, he's, he's put two women in a match, both of which he doesn't want to lose said match. Mm-hmm. So he kind mm-hmm. of boxed himself into a corner and, and resulted in a DQ. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a bit of a screwy finish, Carlos. I hope we don't see that happen again. Exactly. You know, hopefully it's a one-off because, you know, I'd like to think the product, <laughs> you know, hasn't suffered from this. Yeah, I can't, I can't even do it with a straight face. Fuck me. How many DQ fucking shitty finishes do we get? Uh, it's, ri- it's ridiculous. And if you think they're wearing a DQ in Clash of Champions, you're going to be surprised. <laughs> um, but yeah, so after the match, Selena comes down, she gets involved in it as well, which I thought she put on a good show. And to be fair, it kind of made me um, you know, excited for the match with, between her and Asuka, even though the, the match that she had with Mickey was a bit, mm. you know, a bit botchy. But um, yeah, I thought, like I thought time, it did what it needed to, but... Time. Yeah, the whole thing with Peyton, the whole thing with Billy and that thing, and then having Peyton go against Asuka, and then I uh, just I don't know, just don't get the logic sometimes. Um, and then I mentioned before, it's nice to see WWE are building new stars because that's what they need to do. You know, we've got course, the you know, we've big, got... got big segments earlier in the night. We had Dabakato coming out. You know, uh, yeah, this new guy, new star, killing it on Raw Underground. You know, big but, you know, promo. equally, Carl, equally, we've got this this new guy that no one's heard of called Braun Strawman or whatever. That's true. And, that's you true. know, he's, he's come into the business. He's a big guy, but obviously he needs to make a name for himself, you know, so he needs he needs something significant, you know, because we can't just, like, it's not like he's somebody who's just held one of the biggest titles in the company and, and, and now has no storyline. It's not like that. He needs to be built up because he's, like, this fantastic new star. Um, yeah. So it's difficult. Who's going to win this? Who's going to win? I just don't know. I mean, it's anyone's guess. You know, the the brand new Raw Underground guy versus the the new but veteran been been here for years and years, but new, uh, you know, to Raw guy. Um, obviously, the push goes to the new to yeah. Raw guy. So the human choo choo train. <sighs> really? Like fuck me! Like I don't. What, like, what, I've said before. Like, you know, the momentum you had, Dabba. Boom, gone. I still, to this day, don't understand the point behind Raw Underground then because I thought it was going to be to build up somebody. Then I was like, who's it going to be? Okay, is it Riddick Moss? Okay, that's a bit shit. Oh, is it um, Jessamyn Duke and fucking Marina Shafir and, you know, Shayna Baszler's other mates from fucking failed MMA <laughs> stardom? Yeah, okay, nope. cool. One, um, nope, not them. No. Ah, is it, is it Dolph? 
Nah, obviously it's not Dolph. Ah, it's Dabakito. Okay, that meant... Okay. No, yeah, no. yeah okay. why not? He's um, huge. He's apparently... Yeah, so, nearly, I love it. Nearly seven foot tall. He's six <laughs> foot nine. Exactly. Like, exactly. That's still massive, don't get me wrong, but that's not nearly seven foot. Yeah. That's like me yeah. saying I'm nearly six four. I'm fucking not. That's it. I mean, I'm pretty much six foot. Just saying. Just saying. Why not? By so. WWE logic, of course you are. Um, you probably fucking bill you at six foot, Carl, to be honest with you. You know what WWE is like. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm taller than Adam Cole and he's built at six, uh, six foot, so just saying. Really? Sorry. Sorry, no, we've baby. We've been through this. We've even had comments about this. Didn't he work out about 5'8"? Yeah, he's like, well, I, I mean, that, that's what I am. You know. Yeah, so you, you, yeah, so you can be billed at six foot, which is, this is awesome for me. Because that means <laughs> like I can be billed at like 6'2", six, 6'3". Which is cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I've always wanted to be six two or six three. That's it. You could be fucking face to nipple with Triple H. I tell you, you could. That's the dream, Carl. That's the dream. You could. Both build a six four. You could, you could get, <laughs> it could happen. Um, and then, yeah. So yeah, Braun Braun batters Dabakato. Um, yeah, I'm not even like a, a screwy finish in any way. Like the very decisive win over Dabber as well. He knocked him the fuck out. So yeah. You know, yeah so, oh. Back you go, back to developmental. Pretty much how it went down, yeah. Um, <laughs> Why? So, yeah. What was the point in this? Because guess what? We still have nothing for Braun. No, no, we don't. He's not he's going back to the title scene. He's not going back to the only... He's just going to flounder around the mid card for no fucking reason because you don't know what to do with him. Not only has he got nothing on you know, his own show in SmackDown, he brought him over to Raw and... He's, they've now found nothing for him there as well because he has nothing left to do. So, yeah. great. Because he's a big guy who doesn't know how to use his words. <sighs> I think, okay, Bron. <laughs> Are you yeah. hungry? Well, Anthony, that was it. That was the show. And all I can say is fuck this. Fuck Raw. Fuck WWE. If it wasn't for the fact we did this podcast, Anthony... I'd be done, if I'm honest, because it was a complete crock of shit. There was not a single highlight, not a single thing that made sense, and it was a waste of three hours of my life. And I'm going to be, you know, I've had a bad score for Raw before, but you know what? This was a big, fat fucking zero. Um, and that's because I can't give minus scores, Anthony, because yeah. this but fucking... This is sucked. a warning, Raw. I'm, I'm agreeing with Carl right now. He's over there. I'm agreeing with Carl right now. <laughs> this is a zero. This, this was a piss-poor Raw, right? And if you keep this up, we're going to have to start introducing minus figures. This is the Don't benchmark for zero. Don't make us. Do not Don't. make us do this. Don't. Don't. That's right. I know what well, the main thing you fear, Vince, is a small time UK based podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're begging Jersey. Shout yeah. out to Jersey. Don't think we forgot about you, Virginia. Washington, Virginia represent. What? What? <laughs> But it's uh, we're Jersey strong right now. We are, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, fucking hell, Anthony, that was that was painful, mate. It was awful. And for, like for for this to be our little like side hustle and to be into <laughs> nice. yeah, into you know have our own podcast and talk about wrestling because we love it so much. To sit through a show like this. I'm sorry, I'm distracted by you, Bogan, in the camera. But no, I, I scratched my face and I was like, oh no! And I was like, <laughs> kind of okay. Sorry, you carry on. It's funny, right? I do that, like, you know, when I don't have face paint, I'm just like, oh, oh no, oh, it's my face. Um, but yeah, uh, so not good. You carry on, Carl. Not good at all. Not good at all. I'm Blue listening. Steel. Blue Steel, I like it. I like it. Um, <laughs> so that was Raw. That was Raw, Anthony, a big fat fucking zero. Big zero. Let's talk about NXT. And the typical NXT fashion car, it was so much better than Raw, but it was kind of okay. That mm. That's like, if we give ratings in words, it would be okay, right? Mm. So let me fill the card out for you, if I may. We start out the night, which is a good way to start out the night, in all fairness, with a number one contender's battle royal match for the NXT women's title match, number one contender match mm. thing, mm. right? And we see Candice LeRae taking the win. All right. I have some notes on that, but that, that, that's the result, right? We see Damian Priest cutting a promo. <laughs> Nothing else needs to be said there. Nah, he's, he's boring. And, you know, basically, promo in brief. I'm going to win the match I'm having. 
that that that's all you need. <laughs> that that that's it. Right. We saw Tommaso Jamba go up against Jake Atlas with Tommaso taking the win. Obvious. So we then saw a kind of an unusual match here, Carl. Of um, we had Rod Strong and Danny Birch going up against Fabian Aichner and Raul Mendoza. Um, and they acknowledged that this was kind of odd. They done like a backstage promo trying to explain how this works. But essentially, we saw Rod Strong and Danny Birch taking the win, which means the undisputed era versus Birch and um, and is it, only Lock and his partner mm-hmm. are now going to face each other because those two won and tag team together. Kind of weird, but okay, they're trying something. I'm totally on board with that. We saw Damien Priest go up against Austin Theory. As we know, Damien Priest cut a stellar promo early in the night to say he was going to win, and guess what? He did. All needs to be said on that one, Austin Theory. Get fucking squashed. More squashed. Welcome back to our next team, mate. You're, you're, gonna, you're so everywhere. squashed, man. You're going to be on Underground soon enough. Then we see another promo of someone's returning. Someone's returning. Done like this weird sort of backstage modified voice, weird sort of VD VT, and uh, we don't know who it is. So mystery. Um, we've had enough of those lately. Good fun. Then we saw Ridge Holland going up against Antonio De Luca, with Ridge Holland taking the win because no one's heard of Antonio. Then, then we have. The final of the night car, which again was very entertaining and an interesting thing to do, was a gauntlet eliminator match car. So to explain a gauntlet eliminator, if you've never heard of one or if the audience have never heard of one, we start out with two men in the ring and then the time counts down. I can't remember how much time, but time. Um, and then people enter the ring. So we, ha- we started out with um, Kyle O'Reilly versus Kushida. Then Bronson Reed entered the match. Then Tim Thatcher entered the match. Then Cameron Grimes entered the match. So we end up with quite a stacked amount of people. So if you do not eliminate the person you're up against in enough time, then another opponent enters. So that's kind of how it works. So we then saw Kashida leave, but then Bronson, Tim Thatcher were still in. Then Cameron Grimes joins the fray and so on and so on. Um, and we actually saw Kyle O'Reilly take the win. Interesting. So shocking, Kyle O'Reilly... Shocking. Kyle O'Reilly, this match, I should have clarified, is to go forward to challenge Finn Balor. And I'm right in saying Kyle O'Reilly is part of Undisputed Era, am I right, Carl? You are. He is indeed. So we now have Kyle O'Reilly getting the shot at the title that was once held by the the great Adam Cole. So will this lead to something storyline-wise? Who knows? Interesting. So let's talk about the highlights, shall we? I think it's only fair, credit where credit's due, to mention that they've they've opened with a with a really good match with this battle royal. Um and you can never not enjoy a battle royal anyway, to be honest, Carl. But um a nice strong opener from NXT, which is something that we credit um AEW for a lot. So I think it's only fair to mention it this time. Uh, and another little note I want to mention on, on that is that um Shotzi Shotzi look is looking ace at the minute. Like, I've not given her credit in the past, the last few weeks now, she's looked really good. She obviously didn't take the win, but she looked really good in this match. There was a moment as well where the, she did a step up into Guri. It looked fucking brilliant. Like, her in-ring skill is actually getting really good. I don't know if she's always been good and I've never noticed, or if she's actually just improved a lot recently. But uh, all in all, I was all I was ready for her to win this fucking match, to be honest with you. Um, but obviously... We then saw Candice LeRae take the win, which I've no problem with because Io Shirai and, and Shotzi had that match and Shotzi lost. So it's not like I wouldn't have been upset if Shotzi had gone for the title pick yet, but at the same time, I've, I've had the match, so I'm not overly upset that she didn't. And it's interesting to see where they're going to go with Candice LeRae. What I really didn't want was for Rhea Ripley to win. No offense, Rhea, but we've seen that. So, um, yeah, all in all, not a bad result. Didn't really have a particular favourite to win, but yeah, really good battle royal. Um, the other highlight I've got is the Gone Eliminator itself. It was really fun. Um, wasn't overly complicated and overly convoluted like the whole tag situation earlier in the night. But um, yeah, I, it, it had some good spots. It had some good um, members. And I had already sort of mentioned like we ended up with an Undisputed Era member winning, which could have some implication to the group as a whole. Be interesting to see where they go with it, or if they do in mm. fact go with it. 
But those were the highlights for me, Cal. Um, did you have any of your own? Did you have anything that you thought was like a particular highlight that I maybe overlooked or whichever? Or because it was kind of a between those two big matches, it was a bit weak, if I'm honest. So. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think you called out the main ones. I thought um, Tommaso looked good again, but at the same time, he's just, I don't know, he's come back and he was straight away inserted into like the main event picture. And now he's just kind of like, just, I don't know, coasting again into like obscurity a little bit. So I thought the match itself was good. He put on a good show, but... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't it's really one know. of them where I don't think they've got a direction for it. I mean, so that it's this feels a little bit like when Sheamus come back and they're like, "Well, we don't really know what we want to do with you yet, so we're just gonna have you turn up and squash people so that you're still relevant, mm. and then we'll go from there." It feels a little bit like that, to be honest. Like I don't, I can't see a direction. He just seems to be squashing people. Yeah, we'll see. Mm. So as for the Oshite Carl, I've actually only got one. I'll be honest with you. And this doesn't mean it was a great week. And I mean, no offense to that. It was an okay week. It was it was a strong enough week. You know, it wasn't horrendous. It doesn't have a lot of issues, but it wasn't like edgy, you see, exciting. I'll remember this forever kind of stuff either. But um, the only old shite I've got is, sadly, Damien Priest. Because they're trying to push him as someone who's entertaining. And he's not. He's not fun. Mm. He is boring. He can't cut a promo to save his life. He talks really monotone, really but And then he'll try and end like he's really kind of cool and fun. And he'll be like, I'll see you at the after party, hinting at his little hot tub thing. It's like, I don't get why any women get in a hot tub with you, you creepy, creepy <laughs> motherfucker. Right? I feel like... It's I so like cringeworthy. I just don't... I don't get it. After he won the belt, I, I think I, I kind of called that a bit. I thought they were going to go that direction. And I was hoping they wouldn't because it, it just wouldn't work for him. But why the fuck would you do this whole little uh, face you know, uh, getting hot tub with me gimmick. It's just, it's just awful for, for someone like him. It doesn't make yeah. any sense. And he could be something. He's He's got decent skill in the ring. He's just not got no mic skill. And, you know, I don't know where they could go with him, but this isn't it. This isn't it. Mr. Hot Tub Party Guy. Yeah, because he looks like a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah, so that's my main issue. I just don't think they're booking him well at all. As for an overall rating, Carl, with NXT, I'd actually give it a three. It wasn't a bad week. As I say, there's nothing that propels it to be like, wow, this was unforgettable. Like, they were interesting matches. The Battle Royal and the Gauntlet match specifically were interesting, but am I going to remember them forever? No, not really. But I like that they're trying things. I like that it was an interesting week. I like that it had a solid opener and a solid end. So all in all, I've got to give it a three. See, I don't know whether I'm just like, I've got a bit of a cob on this week or what, but um, (laughs) (laughs) for me, I gave it a two because... And like I know that we, like whenever we disagree, we're normally like point a point five score out or whatever. But yeah, yeah. yeah I, can't, I can't. I can't. I know this is the whole point. Um, but yeah, like I thought the women's the women's opening was good. Um, I thought, uh, as I said, uh, Champa was good, and I thought the Eliminator was fine. But at the same time, Kyle O'Reilly against Balor, like I'm all for like pushing, you know different people and having like you know some shocks but at the same time it kind of reminded me a little bit of the fucking Jey Uso thing except without the family relation <laughs> it was just a bit I'm, like I'm expecting okay. shenanigans with that though and I'm probably giving them a pass mm. on that basis like we'll see a takeover which there'll probably be nothing but I'm expecting something to happen I'm expecting the Undisputed there to explode in some way do you know what I mean mm. so yeah I don't know I just thought it was a bit like all in all when you, when you look at it it was okay but there was nothing that kind of jumped out it was like Oh wow, this is this is an excellent show. So, like for me, I think a two was was fine okay. for me. But I mean, that, that's I'm probably less invested in it than, than yourself. Let's be like... No, Carl, I mean you're allowed to be wrong. That's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Wow. Okay. No, no, it's okay. it's fine. Like I was a bit torn myself. It it's it wasn't bad. It just wasn't mm. great. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So it's hard to give it a rating on that basis. We're both kind of landing somewhere in the middle. Like maybe we could both meet at two and a half, maybe, but. You know, it 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 was there thereabouts, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, turn the two around. Okay. Um, oh, Carl. So, Anthony, <laughs> light the fuse, Carl. Light the fuse for the superior of the show on a Wednesday. Um, so dynamite this week. Um, we had twice dynamite 
double dose of dynamite, Anthony, shall we say? And before we um, before you kick off, Carl, I think it's a, a little funny anecdote, and I, I I can't. I'd love to give credit for who mentioned it, and it's something I saw on Twitter. So apologies because I never retained your username, but uh, someone mentioned that. Um, the Tuesday night dynamite was barely promoted, barely advertised. No one really knew about it, which is true. And it still beat NXT in the ratings, which has tickled me. Um, but yeah, like it, no one knew this was happening. What, what was that? So was NXT back on Tuesday this week? Cause I, I had to uh, play it on catch up. So I don't actually know what day it was on. Oh no, I think um, NXT was actually on the Wednesday. I just think they wanted to mention the ratings were. Oh, okay. Like it's nice, not it's nice. not as, as clear a cut as that, but uh, just I think it's just amusing. I think no one even knew it was on, and it's still one. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, you told me about it, and I'm our resident AEW fucking um, <laughs> correspondent, if you will. So yeah, I had no idea that they were doing a special well, Tuesday. A edition. Shout out! A shout out to Brandy Rhodes who mentioned it because I wouldn't have fucking known about it either. Thanks, Brandy. Like we really did not. I'll, I'll be clear, guy. I don't know what deal you've got with the UK, but we really did not see it advertised over here. <laughs> I feel like um, I feel like we we just brushed over how creepy I was. Then I said, "Thank you, Brandy. I'm going in. Um, <laughs> All in. <laughs> going in. Um, yeah, I'm just talking about a, a cooking show which had Tony Khan on this week. So I should just nice. check it out. Shot of Brandy. Great on YouTube, uh, guys. On YouTube, great little show. Great little show. Do you know what else is um, on YouTube? A to the K Wrestle Talk. It is. And, you know, if you watch us on there, as opposed to listen to us on any of the streaming uh, podcast services, you get to see us with silly makeup on. And but trying to avoid touching our faces. Yeah. You know, that's that's more for COVID, though, than anything, right? But, oh, hang on. Of course. Oh, shit, yeah. It's after 10 o'clock, Anthony, so we need to be super vigilant. Super careful right now. Super careful. Oh, I shouldn't even be drinking ba- this. This is kind of like... No alcohol after 10 o'clock, Anthony. Be honest, they've kind of they're kind of pitching COVID a bit. Like, um, you ever seen I Am Legend? <laughs> yeah. So he's like, stay inside of a night because that's when they come out. That, it's a bit like that for us right now. Mm. Like, stay indoors. Might as well be sirens and the words "do not panic." I also feel like a little bit like Gremlins. Like, do not drink after midnight, but like after ten o'clock. Otherwise, some crazy shit's gonna happen. Um, but. I mean, we've got to anyway. a point in our lives, Carl, where we're um, we're staying up late to talk about wrestling and wear face paint. So um, that's twenty twenty. <laughs> that is twenty twenty. It's true. It's true. I don't want to change a thing. That is twenty twenty vision, Anthony. We've finally seen clarity on what uncool is, and we've embraced it. <laughs> we've just embraced it. Embraced it. Um, but yeah, so Tuesday's card had a three match special. So we got to see Scorpio Sky take on Ben Carter who I'd never heard of before, but was fucking fantastic. He's actually from Jersey. Um, so you yeah, can shout out to Ben. So yeah, big Bench. shout out to Ben. Um, the match was phenomenal, um, but as expected, Scorpio Sky picked up the win. We got to see Anna Jay taking on Brandy Rhodes, and that match was really good as well, um, with Anna Jay picking up the win. And the main event of the evening saw Matt Seidel take on Sean Spears, and there were no botches, so we can all rejoice um, although Sean Spears and a special little glove picked up the win in that one. But how many spears could Sean Spears spear? <laughs> Sean Spears spears. Seven spears down by the spears. Um, <laughs> so then moving on to the main Wednesday night show. Um, the opening match was a tag team contest with Kip Sabian and the best man, Miro, making his in-ring debut, taking on Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss with Sabian and Miro picking up the win. We had Hangman Page taking on Evil Uno. Again, this should have been a tag team match, but Omega refused it. Um, so it was a one-on-one, and Hangman Page picked up the win. We had the TNT title on the line with Brody Lee taking on Orange Cassidy, and Brody Lee picked up the win. Thunder Rosa, legend, and Hikaru Shida took on Ivelisse and Diamante, um, and Rosa Shida picked up the win. Okay, rightly so. Rightly yeah, so. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, and the main event of the evening, unsuspected due to what we found out about um, Lance Archer with COVID. Um, so it was originally meant to be a three on three. Um, we actually got a world championship match in its place and we got to see John Moxley take on Eddie Kingston in a really good was, contest to be fair. Wasn't it kind of nice and kind of useful that they had that mm. in their back pocket <laughs> for yeah. something like this happening? 
Yeah, definitely. You can't um, predict the world at the minute, but like it was, it was weirdly, it was already set up. <laughs> I know it's kind of like eerily, like yeah. weird, wasn't it? The fact that it was like it, it just made so much sense. Um, but yeah, and, so you know, that much happened. Credit to Eddie Kingston. We're fans. We're fans, Eddie. You know, just yeah. Check your emails. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's that's all we're saying, Eddie. Respond. Respond. Are you from Jersey? People love us in Jersey. Um, but is he from Jersey? Have I just made a, a broad generalization? I want to say he's from New York, Carl, which that, oh. that might cause more. Just let it go, man. <laughs> you didn't hear anything, Eddie. We love you. We love you. Go, Yankees. Um, so, <laughs> the highlights of the night. Um, so, from the earlier show. Um, well, in fact, I'm going to just preface this by saying I haven't got any O'Shites. That does not mean that these two shows were perfect or flawless because it's so not where a final you know shites, Carl. Oh, you want to you want to play that? You want to play that? Do you? <laughs> Challenging me on my ratings. Yeah. Um, Damn right, I am. I'm a fanboy, so I can't get any old shites. No, um, I would say there was nothing that made me feel it was an old shite, but at the same time, um, you know, some stuff was just average, shall we say? So that kind of brought the the rest of the scores down. But yeah, shut up, Anthony. Um, and okay. me, ugh, I can't even speak words. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's karma, that. Karma, bitch. Karma, bitch. Um, so, the highlights um, we had. One of these Scorpio days, Carl, I'm going to hit you with a chair. <laughs> yeah, you wish. In your <laughs> dreams. In your dreams. Um, so, highlights wise, we had Scorpio Sky taking on Ben Carter. So, as I mentioned, I'd never really heard of this guy before. Ben Carter, that is. We obviously know Scorpio Sky. Um, but he was so good. He was really, really good. Um, and yeah, I just think, I don't know. I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I think Scorpio Sky is going to be a future champ. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Sky is the limit, to be honest. Hey. Um, <laughs> I feel like this guy can just, you know, go sky high. I've just scratched my face again, Anthony. You see? <laughs> it's for the sake of a dad joke. It looks fine. It looks fine. Thanks. The makeup is fine. You heard um, it here, guys. Anthony thinks my face looks fine, so fuck all you guys. <laughs> as long as Anthony likes my face, that's fine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, got the pretty face. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've said before, Scorpio Sky, I think, is going to be a future world champ. Ben Carter, super impressed with this guy. So he's from Jersey. Um, is that technically the UK? I want to say it is, but he's from the island of Jersey, just off. Um, it's it's the UK. I, I don't know because they don't fall under the same tax issue. Let's not get into that. Yeah, so we don't even know where we live. But this guy, he's good. So he trains in the UK. He's from the UK, and you could see that. But at the same time, he's very <laughs> like, athletic. Let's clarify for the for the Americans. He, he's on a, a significantly smaller island than our small island, basically. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. to, like to so, you guys, we're like we're all tiny anyway. So pretty much, pretty much. Um, so yeah, so. I was very impressed with them, and I thought it was an excellent opening contest. Um, Anna Jay, as well, I want to call out. Looks better and better every time I see her. So, yeah, I mean, she's um, definitely working on a on a in ring a bit. Well, on everything really, isn't she? To be fair, and she's looking better and better every time I see her. You know what I'm saying? Um, but no, she looks <laughs> like she looks really, really good. I feel like um, she's got so much happening at the minute. There's like three or four different like threads and storylines with her. So obviously she. She um, has just joined the Dark Order. She's got this whole kind of tag team friendship with Tay Conti, but then, like, she's a heel and Tay's a face. Um, and then, you know, we've got the whole thing Isn't, where... Has Tay Conti not joined them yet, no? Well, I don't, I don't really know what's going on with that, because she was, and she wasn't. Join the and Dark then, Order, Tay. Mm, Everyone's doing yeah. it. <laughs> so I don't really know what's going on with them. And then, obviously, what, um, her feud with Brandy as well, obviously as the only female member of the Dark Order at the time, took out Brandy right in front of Cody. Um, and those, you know, those guys are, you know, in this contest, uh, put on really good chemistry, I thought. Um, and Anna Jay uh, ended up picking up the win as well. So, um, yeah, I was really happy with that. Um, we also, on the main show, we got to see Miro's debut. So I think, you know, he's an absolute beast. We saw that in WWE. We're going to see it here again. He is an absolute legend. The thing with Kip... Right, it's a bit meh, but at the same time, as I've said before, he's there, he's at AEW. Do you know what? He's... Let's be honest, he's been in worse storylines. Oh, 100%. Like, you know, this is not part of some fucking cuckold angle. Like, are we going to find out that Miro's actually, you know, shagging Penelope before behind 
Um, Kips back, who knows? Look, Maybe. And look, we but, know we know that AEW is not above <clears throat> taking shots at WWE, right? So please do a backstage segment where Kip tries to flip a tire, because that would really amuse me. That would be funny, like based <laughs> up based up like the little workout angles and stuff they tried to do. But like, you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me like if they were taking a shot at WWE with the whole cuckold thing, and they're like, well, actually, this time Miro's the fucking um, <laughs> yeah. Miro's the fucking stuff. Miro's and, the uh, yeah, um, but yeah. So I thought that was all. That uh, this whole kind of thing was an interesting dynamic. But at the same the thing time, is, like, thought, you can, like I've seen a lot of people throw shit at this. Like, oh, it was botchy and it wasn't good, and and Miro mm. nearly got injured and all this stuff. At the end of the day, it's Miro's already kind of a big thing, right? People were uh, were amped to see him. Right? So all eyes are going to be on Miro anyway, right? And this is mm. really good for Kip. So maybe they can maybe they can build some momentum for the pair of them together. I'm totally fine with this. And I don't think it was that bad a match. All right, it wasn't perfect, but people are giving it an unnecessary amount of shit, to be honest, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, um, to be fair, I think it's out of the same. I think um, Sunny Kiss was solid. I, I, if, any, if anyone was a, a bit of a botch fest, it was um, Janela, if, mm-hmm. if, if anyone. But at the same time, it wasn't that bad to the point where you need to make such a big deal out of it. Do you know what I mean? I think, fine, it was Miro's debut match and it wasn't perfect, but at the same time, you know, he's... They don't need to put everybody into the main event scene. Like I feel like uh, WWE signed someone like straight away. It's like massive push. They're gonna like fucking throw it, like. So it's nice to see Miro like someone of his, you know, potentially gonna be a future world champ for that company one day. Just start off in like an interesting, fun little angle with Kip Sabian and try and get him over. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I haven't got too much negative to say about it. To be fair, that's fair. Uh, we then got to see Hangman Page take on Evil Uno. Um, again, the match was fine, if not a bit underwhelming. So, same as last week. So, apparently, the the match was offered as a tag match. Kenny Omega decided to decline that again, and yet spent his time sat on commentary again. So, yeah. I'm not really sure I understand that. If I'm well, I'll honest. clarify. Omega is the type of twat <clears throat> to change his status to. It's complicated when it comes to a relationship, because instead of just fucking being done with it, he's like there. He's there, but he doesn't yeah. want to be a part of it. It's like just fuck, mm. fuck off. <laughs> that's Again, a, that's a it's all storyline <laughs> wise. Like, I'm not moaning, but it, it, it's all a story. But like, just what is this? Yeah, I, like I, I don't think it's got the payoff that it needs. If I'm honest, like we've had the whole thing and the fallout, and now it's it's running the risk of just like losing the momentum. If anything, because like, we've had the whole like them two are they going to turn on each other? They're going to not, and then he's just sat in commentary for two weeks and. Yeah, the, only, the only pass I will give it is that maybe you have to be much more into the elite <clears throat> than yeah. we are because we were introduced to the elite from watching all elite. Um, these guys were a thing in Japan together, so like maybe you have to be more into them as like a little faction anyway to be invested mm-hmm. in this split up. To me, even like. Um, the young book splitting up would be more compelling than this, and not that you want to split them up because I, I hate splitting up tag teams that are good and well established. But um, like, I'm I wasn't particularly invested in Omega and, and Page as a tag team anyway. Hmm. Like, if I mean, they were put together for the titles, although I know that there's a friendship there, there's a faction there. I've mentioned before, it, it like it kind of feels odd that they were the ones who won the titles when you got the the young books, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's a very good point that, that you make, to be fair. And I think it's it's almost like an open challenge to AEW. Like, what about the the guys who haven't followed you for all these years and who are just tuning in now? Like, why would it would something like that be more compelling to someone who's followed the elite for, like, years as opposed to, you know, the casual fan who's starting to tune into you guys now? So that's yeah. something that, if that is the case, maybe they need to work on trying to appeal more to a broader audience, but not to, like... WWE's level where like everyone you know has forgot what ha- what has happened last week so we need to like <laughs> yeah. fucking go over it 10 times but yeah um, so I thought that was a, that was okay but it's a bit like meh um, Brody Lee is a fucking legend he is a boss yeah um, great character really when this you think about so it when, good this week if you think that this guy was like seriously part of the Wyatt family you know fucking bludgeon brothers whatever the fuck he was not didn't have any opportunities over in WWE, and then he's come to here now. You know and after a bit of a shaky start, in the yeah. sense of he was imitating yeah. Vince, and he was a bit like mm, finding his feet. 
he's probably one of the best things on the show now on a weekly basis. He's he's a fantastic character. He's a twat. Like he's got all these guys like fucking you know worshiping him, and he just doesn't give a fuck about any of them. And he's just you know he's such a bastard. And uh, yeah, I love it. I yeah. think he's great. Here's the thing though that like the more I see him and the the better work he's doing. Like especially this week, I'm like. All WWE had to do was give him a fucking microphone. Because did you ever see him cut a promo in WWE? Nope. No. This is what you were fucking missing. This guy is actually really good on the mic. Mm. As well as like being a fucking massive guy. Like, because he was... Ma- like, did you see him against Orange Cassidy? He's like, Jesus, he's actually a really big fella. Yeah, definitely. I mean... Uh, WWE really missed the boat with this guy. They really missed... It. This is the cl- prime example of someone underutilized in WWE because... <laughs> Like literally, this guy could cut a promo. Why, you think why? about it as well. In a in WWE, he probably would have been billed as about seven foot two. So, you know, he had proper size on his hand in his oh, on yeah. his side in um, uh, WWE. But yeah, I don't know. I just think yeah, like to your point, like just give him a microphone, just see what the guy can do because he's really entertaining. And oh, like yeah. the match itself, like to see Cassidy straight away off the back of the whole Jericho feud and stuff, he's been. Like he didn't go straight away into like main event prominence or anything like that. He took a bit of a step back. He was involved in the main event last week where he popped up out of a fucking um, the the trunk. Oh yeah, the trunk. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I don't know for him to now get back on track a little bit and go after the TNT title and stuff like that. Like it made sense. But the match itself was like really really good. I thought and um, yeah, I loved how like because they had moments where like Cassidy was was trying to do the typical play and possum thing. And like, um, they even echo to it on the commentary where he tried to do the thing where the Lord Jericho in with the, the, the limp kicks on the legs and then just properly super kicked them. Um, mm. but then Brody obviously answered that he knew what was coming. And it's, it's that kind of work that I love where they've gone. Like Brody's obviously, he's not just having a match with Cassidy. He's watched Cassidy's other matches. He knows how he caught Jericho out, so he's he's made sure he's not falling victim to that. I like that. It's it, it's a mark of intelligence, isn't it? Of going right. I've I've analysed this now. Like this is this was thought out this match, and just little touches like that make me go. It wasn't just lazily thrown together. They, even the way they worked it in the ring was like, well, you've looked into this. Yeah, Defo. Um, you know, it, it is these little like nuances and the little subtleties that you know that you really appreciate about appreciate about a company like AEW you feel like everything has been thought about and and planned through and and like to try and make sense and I feel like a lot of the stuff that they do really does hit that mark yeah um you know after the match um we had Cody return um so on the one hand I'm really made up that he's back because I'm a I'm a bit of a Cody fanboy I think he's really really good um but on the other hand I don't know I'm not sure I'm not sure I'm digging his new look. So he's come back with jet black hair. And when I see him with black hair, I just it reminds me of WWE Cody. <laughs> and I thought WWE Cody was shit. Um, <laughs> well, the so, son of a son of a plumber. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, so worked, like, that worked as a nickname. That was good. Mm, so it's a bit like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I, think, I'm not I don't think into it this too much of that one. I think he's just got tired of dying his hair, to be honest with you. Yeah, but I don't know. They're trying to play it into this fact that he's like a, a bit darker and a bit more menacing and that kind of stuff. But I don't know. Like, I just, I think the whole blonde hair thing, that was like what set him apart as a main event guy. I know it's like all all, all he's done, Carl's dies here. So, you know, like fucking No, I mean, himself. to be fair, he's, he's, it's, it's subtleties, isn't it? He's dyed his hair. He's, he's come out looking a bit more regal. He's changed his attire a little bit. Not as in ring gear, but he's changed his attire a little bit. He was a bit more intense. He was a bit more aggressive. It's not just the hair. So I take your point mm. that this change is potentially good, but I do understand your concerns. Yeah, like I'm, I'm just interested to see how he is as a, as a character now with, with, uh, with these changes. Mm. But we also got to see after the match, um, Brody come out and cut a promo. I thought it was funny the way Anna J just being the only woman just like got the woman interview out the way and just like fucking dragged her off. Um, off screen, you know, like, it's just like you can imagine Brody saying, "You're going to do this, and you're going to do this," and you just go out and execute it. But yeah, um, he cut a promo afterwards. He was furious that Cody had come back, you know, because he'd been carrying the show weeks, and weeks, and Cody went home, you know, like just completely forgetting <laughs> the fact that Cody was defending the belt every week, uh, which was great. 
Um, and it basically interesting, kind of weird to be honest, but at the same time, I am quite excited for it. it was um, he basically sort of set up like a dog collar match, which is kind of like, well, where the fuck did that come from? But at the same time, I want to see it, so okay, <laughs> yeah, fair play, yeah, um, <laughs> why not? Why not? We then got um, the inner circle, um, and the Hardy Party kind of um, interaction, shall we say? So, um yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it looks like, um, you know, Jericho's like taking a liking to private party as well now, as well as Matt Hardy. Um, so I guess now that he wants to be a tag team uh, actor with Jake Hager, he's uh, trying to come out and put over some young tag teams and stuff as well. But, yeah. you know, Hardy comes out, he's like limp into the ring. Obviously, he had that attack last week. Uh, in a circle, come out and say, Sammy's back. We get the little hug pose um, that we've come to know and love between him yeah. and Jericho. Um, but then I don't know it's a bit weird this because then it kind of took off with um, you know Mark Quinn coming out and being like well you know blah 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 then it's like, uh, Isaiah Cassidy comes out and it's like blah 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 and then eventually Cassidy seems to like make the more compelling case um, and, chal- and makes I, a challenge for next week to, I'll be to honest Russia. with you and I don't often moan about Dynamite as you know but Cassidy was a bit weak for me even the line saying, like, oh, what if I make you my Le champion bitch? Is like, is that, it's not good, is it? It's not great. Mm. Like, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't overly sold on, on the promo. It didn't get me hyped for it, I'll be honest. Hope the, I hope it's a really good match and I'm not moaning about it, but I don't know. Um, he, didn't, he didn't really sell it to me with that promo. Yeah, I think, um, I think that's fair, to be honest, because... He was just very, just I don't know. He didn't. He seemed like he lacked experience a bit. Um, but at the same time, I'm quite like Private Party. I quite like the what, like what they've done individually, what they've done as a team. So, you know, I guess it's interesting to see uh, Cassidy go up against Jericho because obviously we've seen Mark Quinn go up there and and uh, do well previously. So, mm. yeah, I don't know. It kind of makes sense, I guess. But at the same time, yeah, yeah. Could be no, there's, there's a lot of logic in the book, and it was more the um, the mic skills on on Cassidy's part, I suppose. Yeah, we also got a fantastic interaction between Chris Jericho and MJF. How fun was that? I loved it. I love them, and I cannot wait uh, for this to happen <laughs> one day in the future. Just I don't know. They're proper so teasing us with it, aren't they? But yeah, that was so good. Yeah. Like, they both had their like, stupid excuses in. It was great. Well, exactly. Like you know, if, if you think back a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, those guys were there, like, complimenting each other, saying they, was, like, they were great, blah, 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 and called each other stupid idiots or whatever they call themselves. And then, um, like, they called themselves on it this week, and they're like, oh, no, I was calling Shivani an idiot. Oh, well, I was calling the limo driver an idiot. And I was just like, oh, okay. Well, well, just like, 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 for convenience, they both went with it as well. Like, so yeah. like oh, I called Shivani an idiot, and um, MJF is there like, oh yeah, he is, isn't he? And they both just imitate Chibani <laughs> for a second and it's like, they just, they both want to believe it and it just tickles me. It's just really good. Do you know what baffles me still to this day? Like, if you, like, you put someone like MJF next to Jericho and he doesn't feel out of place, it's scary. It is scary mm. for this guy to be this good at this age because, like, yeah, if you look, no, look I, I take up, your point, like, he, he's, he is phenomenal at what he's doing. Like, if you look back at all the best promos in the business, no one was this good at this age. No one had even found their character yet. And you've got MJF, this guy, who's just, he's, the, he's it already at that age. And it's just like, fuck, like, where, like, where does he go from here? Like, <laughs> he's, he's Make phenomenal. Make points, but you've got to wonder, like, how much, how much guidance is he getting from people like Jericho, who was phenomenal in his own right? Yeah. Like, to, to excel at such a young age, because of that tutelage, I suppose. Do you know what I mean? I could be wrong, but yeah. he, he's he's got one of the best in the business when it comes to that sort of promo work, especially in Jericho. So hopefully that that's where it's coming from, and that's where he's because he, he has been fantastic. And uh, before AEW, I'm like, where have you been? Like, if you if you're this good, <laughs> where have you been? I know. You know what I mean? Like, so, it- I, it is I can only feel like he's excelled exceptionally well since joining AEW mm-hmm. because there's no way he was this good and not noticed before. And no way. Well, I mean, I don't know though because if you think about it, like he's had tryouts with the WWE and stuff as well, and they probably just didn't see the size in him or didn't see, you know, one like they expect. Well, yeah, we've to get actually seen one of the videotapes, are... and then the shtick was was kind of similar, wasn't it? Where he was saying he's mm-hmm. like, I'm better than you, and 
playing that whole pompous rich guy thing. So in a way, yeah, you're quite right. Like the promo was an echo of the character he is now, maybe not fully fleshed out, but yeah, WWE could have seen that. They could have jumped on this. I mean, it's a fucking massive miss for them. If you think about it, like massive. this guy, and like I've said it before, I will say it again, this guy is going to be, you know, I'd like to think in a few years' time, if the wrestling business carries on the way it is, um, we're going to be talking about him in the same milk as, like, you know, your Flair, your Bret Hart, your Hogan. Like, he's going to be that kind of guy who just takes the business by storm, not even just from, like, a promo capacity, because he's an excellent promo. But oh, yeah. he's had these matches with Jungle Boy. He's had these matches with, with like, all these different guys, like Moxley. Yeah, even, like- and it was just incredible. So... He's not I like think a that's what pro. makes him even almost a more compelling character, that he's actually pretty good in the ring, but he, he still avoids mm. it at all costs. Like, he's still a snivelling sort of weasel, but he can actually go in the ring. So when it, it. When it comes down, it kind of reminds me of Christian in a way, where when Christian was playing the heel, he was a bit like that, where he would avoid the match and he'd be that snivelling weasel guy, but he actually could go in the ring. And um, I think that's interesting because it's not boring when they do get caught out. Yeah, and I thought it was incredible as well the way in the uh, the Moxie feud where he was like, "I am a wrestler. I'm not a fucking hardcore backyard indie whatever. I'm a wrestler. It's all I ever wanted to do." Like in WWE, they would have shied away from that. He would have been like, "All I've ever wanted to do was be a superstar on the main stage." And he's just like, yeah. "No, I'm a wrestler, and yeah, I can don't wrestle. Use the word wrestle. And I'm a better. Re- you know what I mean? It's like you know, it's it, yeah. yeah. No, so. it's a fair point. It's a fair point." Although, you know, we have seen that with Randy Orton. Randy Orton claiming he is the better wrestler than Edge. Mm, that's true. <laughs> Which is uh, built on nothing, but anyway. Nothing. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about uh, for this one is um, Eddie Kingston comes out, cuts a promo. Um, so he is fighting Mox for the belt. And it was a good promo. Again, it was going on about the fact that, you know, he never lost the Battle Royal and therefore he earned a shot. It makes sense from a storyline standpoint. Um, and you know what? The match itself was good as well. Um, you know, for something with no build-up um, ahead of time, it was it was great. It was something that I hadn't even thought about wanting to see. And then as soon as I was like, oh, we're going to get to see fucking Kingston Mox, I want to see it. And yeah. for someone like Kingston <laughs> who isn't a main event star in AEW, when you think about it, if you think about the whole, like, Blanc heap, he... You know, you can quite easily be like, get behind him and go, fucking hell, I want to see this. Whereas, like, you know, no offense to SmackDown or anything like that, but it's like, oh, Jay Uso and um, Roman Reigns, yeah, I want to get behind. Like, they've got the family connection, but really, like, do you, do you give a fuck about uh, fucking Jay Uso? Not really. So, um, you know, this had kind of, I don't know, the best of all worlds, really. And it was a match that, based out of nothing, was, was really, really good. Um, yeah. I've been critical before of Kingston because I think it might be his first match or his second match. Um, he got put out with a submission and he tapped. And I was fuming about that because this guy's a hardcore guy and it didn't make sense with his character. So at least in this one, he didn't tap, but he got yeah, yeah. Uh, choked out. So that one made more sense, I think. So I think we've learned a bit from that. Um, yeah. From a I character mean, it, does, it works to his character a bit better, doesn't it, to be fair? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then after the, after the match, um, the Lucha Bros come down, obviously part of that little faction. And then Will Hobbs comes down, um, trying to make the save. And then Darby comes down. Um, but ultimately, they're too strong for all of them. Um, and it's uh, Taz and Eddie Kingston's factions that stand tall to close out the show. So I mentioned I've got no O'Shites, but um, you know I thought everything was good, decent, um, some things were really good, some things were just decent, but not you know bad enough to put them in a no shite. So for that reason, that reason alone, I want to give it a three point five because there was nothing that stood out as negative as such, but there were some things that were just a bit like, eh, like it was average, but you know something average doesn't deserve to be a negative. If that makes sense. So to me, three and a half makes perfect yeah. sense for the show. Oh yeah, I agree. It was a solid week, and. Um... Again, as far as the week goes, it was probably the best show all week. So I'd have to give it a three and a half as well. It was kind of, it was better than NXT, but had a similar situation where, like you say, it was like, it was good, but it wasn't great. But this was significantly better than NXT. But yeah, for me, three and a half. It wasn't wasn't the best Dynamite I've ever seen, but it was still a fucking good Dynamite. Nice. Nice. So, Anthony, let's round it off with SmackDown. <laughs> Okay, so SmackDown, Carl. Let's talk SmackDown. We had 
we had a fucking weird opening. And I could be wrong on this. Have we ever seen one of these before? They had an ascension ceremony for the IC belts. They had a ceremony in which they put the belts on the fucking metal thing and watched them rise up. Why? I don't know. Never knew we had one of them before. I could be wrong, Carl. You're the historian here, Carl, for now. You're the wrestling historian. Have we ever seen an ascension ceremony before? I mean, we've seen the ascension, really failed tag team, but I don't think we've seen the ascension of a a belt before. Yeah. Don't, yeah, that was weird. Don't know what that was. Uh, But we then, as a result of this whole back and forth, during the Ascension Ceremony, we end up with uh, Sammy versus Jeff versus AJ Styles in a triple threat match. And that's because um, Sammy runs his mouth. So that ball guy who a name always escapes me come out and he's like, no, no, you've done it now. You're going to have a triple threat right now because, you know, it's not good enough that we're getting a triple threat ladder match um, what, on the Sunday. Let's have a triple threat normal match on the Friday. Let's, you know, give the people what they want to see on Sunday now. Yeah. Um, and weirdly, we saw Sammy take the win on a triple threat. Mm. Mm. We then move on to a promo with Otis where nothing really happens. He basically says he's not giving up the money in the bank um, contract. Well, he's going to get sued, Anthony. He's going to get sued. Well, uh, yeah, apparently. But um, we'll talk about that a little more in a bit. But with his promo didn't really further anything as far as I'm concerned other than we now know that Otis isn't going to actually it's going to result in some sort of match or shenanigans or some bullshit uh, and then we jump straight into a Bailey promo which for me like she comes out she sets a chair up she sits there and she talks for a bit and the whole crux of the promo is she's going to beat Nikki and she doesn't like Sasha that's pretty much the promo um, I was expecting more from this if I'm honest I was expecting some sort of attack or something but nothing happened Bailey said a piece and that was that uh, we then move on to a match between Grand Metalik and Shinsuke because obviously the tag teams are going to face each other on Sunday, so why not have one member of each tag team face each other tonight? Not that we've seen that before. I, I mean, so many iterations of these people fighting, but there you go. And we saw Shinsuke taking the win on that one. Then we had a promo from Jay Uso, who basically was like, yeah, I can watch SmackDown as well. So I saw you giving me that look. What was the look about? And... Um, he doesn't get to know until later. So that's that. He uh, he, he noticed that uh, Roman was giving him a look. We then cut to a Corbin sort of promo, moaning about Matt Riddle. Apparently this is still a thing. I thought we were done and dusted with this, but um, he cuts a promo on not liking Matt Riddle. And then we go to a match between Matt Riddle and King Corbin, with King Corbin taking the win. So this now means that they've, you know, Riddle's beat Corbin and Corbin's beat Riddle, so we're probably not fucking done with this. Yay. Isn't it weird, Carl, having a Corbin feud that doesn't fucking end? I know, so out of the ordinary. So out of the ordinary. So we, we then continue with mystery legs that are still, I still call it mystery legs, we've seen much more of it now, but um, we then cut to another promo for mystery legs, and uh, this time we see a right untouchable in lipstick on the mirror, which may be a further hint, but um, I think we're all preferring confident it's Carmella at this point I don't know uh, mm. still not showing a face though so you never know then we move to a match between Alexa Bliss and Lacey Evans with uh, Lacey taking the win due to a DQ because mm. this is interesting I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit more because I didn't mind it too much but we get more shenanigans with the Fiend basically um, anyway we weirdly end the night with Roman coming out after that match to address Jay's questions because he was going to do it on his own terms. And sadly, this wasn't, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great as a promo goes because he basically is like, yeah, you're not fit enough to hold the title, which we already knew. That's how he felt. So it's like, okay, so that's not really a reason for giving him daggers, but okay. And that was the card, Cal. So as far as the highlights go, um, and this might be a little bit polarizing. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm actually still on board for the the Alexa stuff. This one felt progressive. This time she had a match with Lacey Evans and was being haunted by Bray, essentially. Like we were getting the laughter. We were getting those cuts. 
And that was what was sending her off into a weird zombie-like state as much as that's kind of fucking stupid. Um, but what I liked about this is this wasn't just all Alexa. Everything so far has been very one-sided. Alexa's been obsessed and she's been triggered by these words, but he's never actually done anything. And this is the first time we've seen his music hit or the laughter hit or something that, that makes it look like he's trying to manipulate her. Like this is a definite, he's involved, if you know what I mean. So I was fine with that. It works for progression. Um, and I'm still intrigued by what's going to happen. Um, we haven't seen much of Bray lately, so hopefully something good comes of this. But how do you feel about it? Because it, for me, it's still intriguing enough. It's not where I would have personally liked it to have gone, but at least it's still something that I'm like, okay, what's going to happen here? Yeah, I don't know, to be honest. I think um, you've not really made the minds up. Like, is it hearing his name that triggers it? Now is it like a little weird red light vignette, like whatever thing that triggers it? Like, what what has happened to her? And what are the, the triggers? What does she actually feel, I don't know, I just think it's a bit all over the place. Um, and obviously we've not seen The Fiend comment or anything on this. You know, this was probably the closest we got this week with the yeah. fact that he acknowledged it and there was like videos and whatever. But What did you I make just, I, of this little tease where Alexa, as she's leaving, still in the hair, Fiend-like, trance-like state, <laughs> giving Roman daggers who was walking out at the time, like angry at him because of what, he took from the fiend. I, I I like that subtle hint that maybe that's not done. Um, what did you make of this one? I mean, there's definitely something to that. They focus so much on it that it's not just like a coincidence. Oh yeah, thing. even the announcers mentioned it. So yeah. um, it's definitely uh, deliberate. Yeah. So I don't know. Is it is it the fiend is living vicariously through uh, Alexa? In which case, it was the fiend staring at Rome and saying, "I want what's mine," mm-hmm. or is it like you know he's. What, like she's, she's let point. him in a bit too much and now the, 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 <laughs> not Bray it. not Bray but the fiend can mm. sort of possess whomever he likes in some senses maybe maybe mm. but either way I'm I'm still quite intrigued by it it's not where personally I would have gone with it but hey they don't pay me to write stuff so there you go <laughs> the other highlight Carl was I mentioned being a little bit mm, about Roman's promo, right? And yeah, I was a little bit up and down about that. But they've done this little tease where Roman sort of walked away and we leave Jay sort of like, right? And then as Jay's leaving, Roman comes flying out and uh, Drops him on the ramp. I want to say it was it was a Superman punch. Hits him with a Superman punch on the ramp, and that sort of good little bit of heel work, that sudden attack, that that sort of treacherous betrayal on your family kind of thing that they're building towards, it worked for me. I was like, yeah, I popped for that. If they hadn't have done that, I'd have been pissed off. But he come right back out out of nowhere and attack Jay, and I'm like, yeah, this is the the, the sort of calculating visceral evil. Roman than I want. So as much as the promo didn't really add much to it, I love this little attack at the end as well. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> no, I agree. I think um, he's obviously been, I don't know, suffering a little bit from, you know, Reigns complex, if you will, where it's like, well, okay, what is he going to do? Is, is he is he actually a heel? Is he not? Like the whole thing with him and Jay, like he's alluded to it for a while, but then I think... I don't know, this kind of made it seem like, okay, he can be a, a top-level heel, and I'm, you know, I'm excited to see what happens in the main event at Clash of Champions off the back of this. So yeah. uh, I think it did where it needed to. Cool. So as far as the O'Shites, Carl, I'm already sort of briefly mentioned it, but the, the whole ceremony to suspend the belts was stupid. Um, like that, to me, is the equivalent of having a ceremony to watch you put the fucking tables and chairs and stuff under the ring. Like we we know they're there. What? Why do we need to see it fucking happen? <laughs> that was stupid. Um, and it's not like they needed an excuse. This was like it was a lazy reason to get them all in to talk shit and have this little match. It didn't really. I don't know. It it didn't do nothing for me this at all. And this is another one of them where they they lead into this triple threat. And I've seen this a lot now. Like this pay per view, I've moaned about in previous weeks, where it's like. Every match in this pay-per-view we've seen in some form. 
and this is another one we've had a triple threat now between the three of them so like I would have preferred not to have that and then we hadn't seen it until we got to the pay-per-view and I think this is something that WWE suffer with a lot at the minute and they seem to like they have too much time to play with before the pay-per-view so they, they have weeks where they're just because we've seen it on Raw we've seen it on that side of it where it's like you know the Drew and Randy stuff was set up and ready and then they had to keep it going for a few weeks and it's like it's, I don't know, it's almost like they've they've set everything up too soon. So now it's like, well, what, what do we do this week? Uh, let's have another promo. Let's let's have a, a, another match. Let's let, so that we don't forget because naturally we're not you know we're not allowed to not see them. Carl, or we might forget about them. Um, so <laughs> yeah. for me, this triple threat was unnecessary. The promo was unnecessary. There was just nothing they needed to add for this match on Sunday, but they needed something for the for the SmackDown. So they did this, and it was just shit. Yeah, I think I think they tend to book themselves into a corner um, to the point where they know what they want to do in terms of the feud. They know where they want to like how they want to end it off, and it's then linking them two things. And I feel like they struggle massively to mm. put that into weeks worth of telly because they just kind of go, "Well, shit, we had we could do this and this," and now we're like, "Fuck, we have no idea." And then like to your point, okay, well, why don't we do this this thing or that thing? And it just doesn't feel organic. Whereas I feel like that's the big differential between these guys and AEW at the minute where they'll do long-term booking and you know well they want it they're at a they want to get to z and here's all the different steps we're going to take to get there whereas these guys are like oh well okay well we know we want to get to z uh we let, we've done a um let's do let's <laughs> do j um let's do j then like, like we'll do r then we'll go back to you know um shit and um, we'll go back to h <laughs> and then we'll go to q and then yeah then we'll end up in z and it's like well where the f- what the fuck's happening <laughs> yeah wait what um pretty much while what's moaning about it i just want to mention that that damn cliche that i've mentioned before where you know we we saw it this week aj got out a ladder why did he get out a ladder to prove that he can climb ladders <laughs> what is the fucking point in it i hate this i fucking hate this you got out a ladder and climbed the ladder it's like okay wow this means you're gonna win clearly and you know what that means and i've mentioned it before you know what it means it means aj's not gonna win whoever climbs the ladder yeah. on these stupid fucking segments is the one who's not gonna win because he never put the winner doing that and surprise surprise he doesn't just spoilers ready for um clash there <laughs> so another little bugbear for me carl they had this otis promo and Otis is like thinking like ah, big city lawyers because I'm a redneck and all this bollocks that they do. And um, he's basically saying he's he's not no, not giving up his money in the bank. And um, then we have Miz and Morrison turn up and, you know, Tucky switched on. He's having to read the contract. How come this only mentions the Miz? And then for some reason that trigger is Otis is like, well, it only mentions the Miz. That means I can beat this shit out of Morrison. And I'm like, but doesn't that just mean that Morrison can sue you now as well? Like, why th- Why was that leap made to go, well, okay, the Miz is the only one named on his lawsuit because he's the one after your money in the bank and he's the one that you attacked. And your logic to that is to then go, well, Morrison isn't named in the lawsuit, so I can feel free to attack Morrison. Isn't that the same problem? Can't he now turn around and go, well, I'm going to sue you as well because you attacked me and made an unsafe work environment and various other bollocks, right? Bear in mind, they were suggesting like Miz and Morrison turned up like, oh, we're going to, we're going to take your, your mum's trailer. We're going to take your house. We're going to take all this. If you don't give us money in the bank. And it's like, I know Otis is kind of portrayed as kind of a dumb guy, but haven't you just made this 10 times worse? I don't like, why, why would you attack Morrison? Like your beef is with the Miz anyway. If you're going to do it, you might as well fucking going to attack the Miz again. Yeah. Can't, I thought, I feel like we've lived through um, Otis and Dolph, and then it's like, well, where do we go next? I know, we'll go to the Miz and <laughs> Morrison. It's like <laughs> they're the same guys, basically, but just different names. Like yeah. it's felt so mundane and like boring for ages. It's like you know, Mandy and Sonya, and now it's like the money in the beat, the money in the bank briefcase. Ugh. It's just it's the same shit over and over again, and it's just it's, yeah. it doesn't vary enough. And this whole thing with like. Well, well, you know, I feel like where it's leading up to is, well, well, you know, Miz, your lawyer didn't put the, uh, you know, John Morrison's name on the uh, the contract. So what does that mean? So obviously it's going to culminate in them two being like the feud, isn't it? So it's like, well, what a painful way to get there. <laughs> the thing for me, like, there's so many 
and it's stuff we've seen done before. So I don't think I'm like the most creative guy in the world for coming up with this, but like, I would have much preferred the usual trope of like, they think Otis is stupid. So they've tried to blind them with all this legal stuff. And then Otis reads the contract and he goes, well, actually here's a loophole and I'm doing that. And he actually bests them on something that they think that they've got him on. I would have preferred that. And I know we've seen that before. It's like, ah, you think he's stupid, but he's not. But isn't that better than just going, no, look, he is, he's a dumb redneck, which is what mm. they're doing. I, I really, I don't get why Otis would want to do this as a gimmick. To be, I know like you want to be a star, so you kind of don't argue with the top brass, but it's like, it's making you out like a dumb hick. It's not great. No, <laughs> no, it's not. Um, my last one, I've already briefly mentioned it again, so I'll only gloss over it, is the fact that um, we had this payback rematch that they even referred to it as a payback rematch between Riddle and um, Corbin, with Corbin taking the win now. And to me, I'm like, why? 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 Because this is clearly going to progress in some way to another, another match we're done. It doesn't need... This is what's going to ruin Riddle's main event, uh, main roster call-up, is that he never gets to fight anyone else. Let's move on. Let's do something else. There's plenty of wrestlers there. Big East walking around doing fuck all. And you've got this guy fighting Corbin every five minutes. Let's move on. Let's, let's do something else. Hmm. And that was me, as a As As a whole, it wasn't a bad week for SmackDown. It wasn't great. So I'm probably going to give it a two. Okay. Interesting. Um, for me, I will probably have to hover around the same... Um, I don't. I, I was. I, I was talking between a one point five and a two, um, but I feel like as we've been chatting through it, some of the stuff was probably. I think I was being too harsh on when I was giving my initial ratings of stuff like um, Alexa and Lacey and stuff like um, the Roman and Jay thing mm. and stuff like that. So I feel like I think a two is fair. If, if, yeah. if you know, Raw for me, Raw was a zero. Um, NXT was a two, um, and it was definitely on par with NXT. Yeah. So. I'll acknowledge it as well for our listeners right now that every single show bar Raw, I've gone, it was okay, but it wasn't great. And then I've given it a totally different rating. So I'm going to acknowledge mm. that, that it seems to become some sort of catchphrase between the shows. They were all okay, but they weren't great, but they were all better than each other in different ways. Okay. So, because uh, <laughs> I'm thinking Stop about it now. Guys. Thinking about it now, right? And I know I've said that for everyone bar Raw. Okay. <laughs> so. That's SmackDown, Carl. Now, WWE Superstar Cedric Alexander here to ask you one question. Or maybe many questions. Do you like wrestling? Do you like podcasts? Do you have YouTube? Do you have Spotify? Do you have any other form of social media where you can listen to podcasts? Well, then you should be listening to A to the K Wrestle Talk. That's A to the K Wrestle Talk. Listen to it because I said so.